Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to Versus. While the requests keep rolling in and I thank you for this, our second on-demand Versus matchup in as many weeks, you guys wanted to see all steel, all-time models from all-time great brands. And thus, by request, I give you Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph Generation 3 versus Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph. Versus starts now. Vacheron Constantin launched its overseas line in 1996. Inspired by the 1977 Vacheron Constantin 222 sports watch, the overseas welcomed its second generation in 2004 and its third in 2016. Today's focus is the most popular, the Blue Dial variant. A launch model and still in the collection, it's the overseas that is most often discussed online. One could say that for Vacheron Constantin, a brand lacking a long-term design icon like AP's Royal Oak or Patek's Nautilus, that endless variations of elaborate case art as a design philosophy represent one of Vacheron's core values as a brand. It's not a look, it's an idea. Vacheron has kept the overseas line visibly related, however, through every generational turn for 22 years. And this tonneau sports watch form evolves without drama. Anchor points of the design include the vaguely 70s vibe of the case volume, 222 inspired integration of lugs and bracelet, and a profusion of Maltese cross motifs. Compared to its first two generations, the Overseas 3 sports a far greater disparity between case width and bracelet width. Given an integrated lug profile that joins the case to bracelet in a continuous taper, the result is a precipitous and somewhat polarizing narrowing of the case to the bracelet. The same qualities have been noted on the original Rolex Deep Sea and the FP Journe Monopusher Rattrapont for comparison's sake. Compared to the second generation overseas, the third generation model is set apart by its broader bezel and a new circular bezel plinth that offers further visual extension and elevation of this component. In total, the effect is to make the compound bezel structure far more prominent than in the past. Combined with the deeper case, heavier lug profiles, and broader midsection, the Vacheron looks more massive than the Royal Oak. That said, case finish does not disappoint. That Geneva stamp on the case back signifies the new whole watch hallmark standards are in practice on the overseas. Vacheron's bracelet is as impressive as ever with substantial wrist feel, comfort, and handsome finish. It matches AP and Patek's bracelets in all respect but one. This overseas offers quick release lugs and ships with a blue accessory leather strap, blue rubber strap, and a steel deployant clasp. All of that with the bracelet. All can be fitted and removed with a fingernail. For many, this feature is the selling point that tips the balance over AP and the House of Stern. Let's get this out of the way. Vacheron's original Grande Date at 12 o'clock is much missed. While the new dial is more beautiful in detail, Gen 1 and Gen 2 overseas fans have this one incontestable ace in the hole. All of which is important, but the new overseas plays with a stronger metaphorical hand overall. Detail on this blue dial variant is stunning, and online photos depicting a sunburst style finish couldn't be farther off the mark. Its metallic black polish in its base explodes from beneath a translucent blue top coat. It's almost all of the qualities you'd expect of a lacquer and all the qualities you'd expect of a mirror. While inverse panda, silver, and brown dials have been offered, only the blue dial features this dramatic layered composition. Although I have no specific knowledge of where this dial is made or who invented and made it, Geneva is a small place, and that blue looks awfully familiar. Additional richness arrives courtesy of larger white gold index frames for each hour. They seem to be more precious metal in composition than Luminova, and that's a welcome change from the older overseas, which seemed more paint and less precious metal. However, Lume remains excellent. 
detail changes include the removal of the earlier watch's asymmetrical chronograph minute and hour counters, the latter moves to 6 o'clock from its old station at 9 o'clock, dark, nearly black sub-registers are countersunk, and the old polished register chapter rings have been replaced by monotone blue rings. Narrower hands at center trade assertive span for elegance, and the dial is more intricately calibrated with minutes, seconds, and fractional hashes on concentric outer scales. For many, the addition of the overseas first display case back is the Gen 3's standout upgrade. VC's manufacturer caliber 5200 replaces the now 30 plus year old Frederic Piguet 1185 architecture. The new movement lacks stop seconds, and that's pretty much the extent of my criticism. This is Vacheron's first ever automatic chronograph caliber, and it was worth the wait. Twin mainspring barrels are wound by a unidirectional automatic rotor, which Vacheron boasts is engraved, not stamped, to achieve a beautiful compass rose format. A superb 52-hour power reserve results. Function selection is by a column wheel with black polished Maltese cross center. Vertical clutch engagement means smooth actuation with the flexibility to run the chronograph full-time with no hazard. Display case backs, it should be noted, only make sense when there's something to see. And thanks to Geneva Hallmark finish levels, there's plenty to enjoy. Richly textured linear coat de Genève perfectly aligned across bridges, black polished screw heads and column wheel tops, mirrored and rounded hand beveling of bridges and micro perlage engine turning on the base plate. It's all here, and it is worth your while. Happily, 150 meter water resistance and 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic field channeling remain from the previous solid back overseas. First Royal Oak bowed in 1972, the 39mm chronograph arrived only in 1997. It's a contemporary of the original overseas. Today's watch is an example of the 41mm 2012-2016 generation of the Royal Oak chronograph, a common pre-owned market rival to the G3 overseas. The Royal Oak 41mm case wears like a Royal Oak or offshore of any description, that is to say, far larger than its rated size. For practical purposes, think of this 41 as a 42 to 43 millimeter round watch, and assume that wrists below 14.5 centimeters need not apply. Aesthetically, the Royal Oak's profile is broad and flat, 11.1 millimeters thick and 54.8 millimeters from end link to end link. It has sizable shoulders. It requires almost exactly the same wrist size as the 42 millimeter offshore but the lower profile opens up more cuff options than AP's signature bruiser. Iconic is the second most overused word in this industry after luxury. Both terms have been distended to comic proportions and extents by marketers, and serious collectors tend to laugh when either term is invoked. But nobody laughs when a Royal Oak is described as either luxury or iconic. Both qualities are self-evident to collectors of even sophomoric sophistication. Going on, 46 years of unbroken reverence attests to this iconic status. Impossibly lush detailing attests to luxury. Look at that octagonal bezel. You know what it is. Nothing needs to be said. Stare with longing at those gleaming bevels and Savile Row creases. Somebody's eye, hand, and experience made that. All of it. The quality is self-evident. And you know that the first scratch will leave two marks one on your watch, and one on your soul. The bracelet is an extension of the case, exactly as Genta intended. Quality, detail, and evidence of the artisan are as richly expressed by these links as any part of the case. The clasp is robust enough to feature on the offshore without objection. The Royal Oak's celebrated tapisserie dial is present and correct. Detail is superb. The well-known hobnail pattern is stamped on the offshores, but it continues to be made the old-fashioned way for the standard Royal Oaks and chronographs. Still made on a 19th century pantograph template mimic engraver, this process has been in-house at AP since 2012, when this model debuted. 
Note that this 2012 to 2016 dial features symmetrical sub-registers, a key distinction that sets it apart from the calculated imbalance of the 2017 iteration. White gold indices, hands, and AP logo are rich. These are the equal of Vacheron's dial furniture. The black dial itself is future-proofed. Silver traditionally is weaker second-hand, and blue is trendy for now, but black is forever. Materials are superb. Diamond polished and hand-laid appliques gratify upon close scrutiny, and the polished inner bezel, like opposing wall mirrors in ballrooms, create the impression of infinite space. Loomis provided insufficient quantity to light the dial by night. AP's Royal Oak Chronograph has changed considerably since 1997, but its movement has not. The Audemars Piguet caliber is a Frédéric Piguet 1185 delivered with five position adjustment and a custom rotor. This is a classic caliber originally designed for Blancpain and used by innumerable premium chronographs, including the first two generations of the overseas chronograph. In the caliber's favor, its vertical clutch and column wheel tandem make for a precise and pleasurable user experience. The movement remains thin and impressively packaged. That said, power reserve, beat rate, durability, finishing quality, to say nothing of its outsourced status, all lag behind Vacheron. The price of owning a classic car is that your ride will lack most modern features, and the same goes for classic chronographs. Although the 2017 Royal Oak Chronograph uses faux screw-down chronograph pushers, today's watch and its generation used the real deal to achieve 50-meter water resistance, which AP has rated as sufficient for surface swimming. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph Advantages Iconic design actually worthy of the term. It's an article of art, pop culture, and our own watch-collecting subculture all in one. Beauty is subjective, but there seems to be agreement that Vacheron didn't quite nail the proportions of the Gen 3 overseas. AP's Royal Oak is downright platonic. Bulletproof resale. The AP gains slightly when pre-owned. The Vacheron takes an immediate hit. Thin, flat, and wearable with any cuff, the Royal Oak Chronograph offers greater elegance and formal attire than the overseas chronograph. Warranty. The new AP warranty is five years from boutiques and authorized dealers. Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph Advantages. This watch ships with three bands. Thanks to quick release lugs, you can swap between the two straps and the bracelet using only a fingernail. Durability. The AP's Frédéric Piguet caliber has a reputation for scant durability in sports watch applications, and guess what? This is one of them. Add Vacheron's attention to magnetic shielding and 100 meter water resistance advantage, and this is a route. Versatility. Do you want one watch that can replace both a Royal Oak Chronograph and an Offshore? The Overseas Chrono G3 is that watch. Unrivaled pre-owned value. After that initial hit, the second owner receives a more deluxe watch, caliber, and accessory set than the pre-owned AP owner, who pays more for less. Vacheron Constantin has a more impressive movement, gives you the ability to see it, and boasts external finish that matches blows with the mighty Royal Oak. Windows to the soul. Brown, inverse panda, and blue overseas dials are equally enthralling. AP buyers only seem to get excited about the blue option. And for my choice, this was the closest versus matchup since series inception. The Vacheron's quirky proportions were at an immediate disadvantage against AP's timeless shape, and the overseas ditched its famed double date to nearly universal dismay. But have you seen the proportions of an offshore? I can think of only one watch equally well equipped to battle the Royal Oak and its big brother, while making both appear tired from years of minimal investment. The G3 Overseas Chronograph wins with immense added value, mechanical virtuosity, and the ineffable beauty of imperfection. It's both more sophisticated and more human, and it's my choice among this pair.